Hi there, everyone. I'm Eileen Armstrong, VP of Editorial for SC Media, and welcome to yet another SC In Focus uh, here at RSA Conference. With me now is uh, Vikram Fatak, he's CEO of NSS. If you talk to anybody at this show, um, I'm sure we could all agree that enterprises are just drowning in loads of data. So can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about how they can suss out some details that could really help them uh, sort of head off some of the cyber attacks that people are experiencing now? I've got a bit of a different view from a lot of folks, and they, which is I think that um, we need to move more towards automation um, to handle some of this. Meaning that um, if you talk about, uh, for example, uh, disaster recovery, there's a plan that says when this happens, what you're going to do about it, sure. right? Right now, we have all this information, all this data, but there isn't really a plan that says what are we going to do about it, right? And I think that's one of the biggest problems because without a plan, how do you prioritize? Without a plan, how do you move quickly to actually do something when you find something? Right, it becomes uh, everything becomes an exception, and everything is a one-off, and it's very labor-intensive and very painful. I mean, I've talked to a lot of enterprises. I'm sure you have as well. well. Sure. And it's it's a really hard thing, and it also doesn't scale down. Hopefully, over the next couple of years, we're going to start seeing security vendors uh, develop some more automation, and or you know, we Phantom Cyber last year did the policy orchestration thing. Yeah. Um, it's great, but there's nothing to orchestrate, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully, there's going to start being more products that come out that can start doing content orchestration, tying these pieces together and working with one another. So are you finding then, and I'm sure you might be hearing this from some of the CISOs with whom you're mm -hmm. speaking, that this, the sheer volume of data is mm -hmm. actually making them more vulnerable to attack? Right. Well, they just don't know where to look, right? It's just the needle in the haystack problem. And I think um, part of the problem is this hunt for attribution, right? Uh, if you talk to folks that are really... because. Attribution is great for law enforcement. It's really not so great if you're trying to stop an attack. Mm. And so a large part of the focus, I think, needs to be moving away from indicators of who it was to what are they doing, and then indicators, you know, in, I don't get too technical, but in memory, et cetera, of uh, what these attacks are, are actually, what's going on, and then with the tools you can start remediating, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, but that's where automation comes into play. If you can actually get things in a standard format and actually um, you know, put them into a tool that can then tell you is that any of that happening in your network, you're not going to necessarily stop the breach, but you could stop it, a breach from becoming a full-blown incident. So one of the things, uh, a topic that we've been hearing about a lot, uh, probably over the last year, definitely in the last three months, um, is this idea that the threat intel that organizations mm -hmm. are collecting really starts to become much more palpable, important, impactful when the CISOs are working with their peers in the industry, kind of moving beyond their walls, working with government agencies, mm -hmm. um, law enforcement. What are you seeing here? Well, so I, I was just on a panel, uh, Chairman McCall, after his keynote, he had a, a, a panel discussion and we were talking about this a little bit. And um, you were taught to share as a kid, right? Sharing is like motherhood and apple pie. Sure. It, nobody's against sharing. Yeah. Um, uh, the problem is, again, you're sharing information and not being able to action it, it you know, and so we need to have a vision of what what's next and being able to orchestrate defenses. Um, and I'm not suggesting the government do this at all, but, you know, uh, as companies working together, and as you start talking about, you know, this, you know, the, the, uh, this playbook of, you know, if there's a new attack against Flash by some organized crime unit somewhere that be, we become aware of, here's the things you can do. You've already decided beforehand, and now it's a matter of executing. And if, as an industry, that starts happening, then you, you dramatically change the defensive uh, posture that the bad guys are going after, right? You, you, you change the game. And so I think that's where it really needs to go. Yeah, definitely, because I mean, they're sort of, they're sharing information, they're right. working together, so obviously we would be in a much better position. Right, right. and also, I mean, look, I, I, uh, I know that the, the, the intelligence agencies have a lot of information. The thing I, uh, I've been hearing is um, none of it's magical, right? And there's still a lot of work involved, and so just having the information, the question is, to what end? Mm -hmm. You know, all the sharing, all this, it's, it's good, it's a good foundational thing to have, but now what? Can you talk a little bit about, maybe kind of share some advice on some of the, mm -hmm. the primary best practices organizations really need to ensure that they're implementing so that they're able to take a long-term strategic view with their security planning, but then also tackle the day-to-day, -day, you know, tactical um, operations as well? Well, I, I tend to think of these things in terms of risk and return on investment, 
right? Meaning you're not going to logically spend a million dollars to protect something that's only worth a thousand, sure. right? So having some sense of uh, what you're trying to protect, I mean, is it from in terms of best practice, right? It, it dictates what approach you take. So if your issue is credit card information, we'll encrypt the credit card information, right? And so we need to move away from one size fits all, I think, right? Uh, it's been viewed as kind of a Windows problem, obviously with the Internet of Things and the cloud, and it's changed, right? And so people need to catch up and think about things a little bit differently. Our data is showing that 50% of the Internet traffic is encrypted right now. It's mm -hmm. going to be about 75% conservatively by the end of 2018, right? So end of next year, 75% encrypted. All the security products you have, unless you handle encryption in some way, or you have a robust endpoint defense, are blind. So to be clear, you do not have to sacrifice privacy to um, solve the encryption and security problem. Um, it's, it's just a matter of doing it the right way. Um, there's lots of wrong ways to do it. Sure. And that um, uh, you know, would cause a lot of problems, I think, for a lot of people. And, but if we tackle it intelligently, uh, I think we can uh, have the best of both worlds. But we're, despite the fact that you are seeing such a high number mm -hmm. of um, a high usage of uh, cryptography, I would imagine we're still a lit, uh, we're far away from organizations taking that kind of more forward thinking view of their security programs. Uh, I, no, I yeah, mean, no, we are. We yeah. are. So here's the thing that it, two years ago, encryption was not, uh, on the internet was not, you know, 20, 15, 20 percent. It was not a big deal. Once we've hit a tipping point of 50 percent and it's, it's accelerating, yeah. it's happened out of the blue. Right, it's caught a lot of people by surprise, mm -hmm. and so it just becomes a, something that uh, we need to be thinking about, right? And it's uh, uh, in terms of what should you do as an enterprise, it would probably be, you know, how are you handling it? What are you really trying to go after? Does it make sense actually to solve the encrypt, you know, going blind problem with more encryption? Meaning, mm -hmm. if folks are after certain data, well, maybe you have even more, mm -hmm. right? Um, other times, it may be if you're going after, you know, ransomware is trying to go after something. There's a different type of technology that you bring to bear on the endpoint or in somehow. Well, a lot of questions out there and certainly many challenges for CISOs. So uh, Vikram, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, and that is it for this SC in Focus. I'm Eilina Armstrong. Thank you so much for clicking in.